very quick tour of the important things in the new 1.3.0 for anyone who wants to know. Metadata scan. Previously, when you'd open a project, there'd be the import window you could view. I've now made it so that the scan has to complete before, before you can do anything to avoid it was causing too many issues. So here, loading and there. It was very quick in this one because it's a small project, but if you had a much bigger set of rushes, that might take a while. But at least you know when that's finished your rushes are all scanned, so anything like fine matches or anything else is just definitely going to work fine. So that was that. Uh, scene change track. Uh, need to import a video EDL that has good scene change information. So video EDL, clip names, usual shenanigans in the clip names. Right click. Export scene cut track, calling it beta just because it's new. I put as much instructions as I could here to make it clear, but essentially this is a list of all the different types of formats that it's found in the clip name list. And you can just quickly see which ones contain anything useful. And so you have the number of usages, so you can ignore the stuff which only appears once or twice, or you can, if you want to use it, you can use it. This is an example of that format, kind of just a random one in that format. Uh, and an index is the, the number token within the example to use as the scene. So if I click on this, click anywhere on that column, you see index is, sc is scrolling around and it's changing between 1, 77, 1 and 1 and 77, which reflects 1, 1, 77. It's not working perfect, perfectly yet with some of these weird things like 1 plus 2. But it can all be improved if you send me good send me examples of stuff that should form that and I'll, I'll upgrade it here one eight eight three three if I click so one eight eight three three so I know that the eight is the scene change so I'm going to put that on eight I'm going to put this on the second one I'm going to put this on six because I know the six is the scene so I'm, I'm telling it to use the second number in that format this I'm going to ignore this I'm going to ignore them you can include these if you want slugs to, to appear clip groups to appear to represent each one of these, you can include it. Uh, um, just go back to zero to exclude it. But I'll just leave them out here. There's only four usages of this, but I'll include it because I know that it's nine, so I've clicked twice, index two, result nine. Here, I think scene 81, I guess. So this result column should show scene numbers. So now I press export. I cre created this scene cut track here. And I'll just drop it here. Obviously, I haven't got any guides or anything, but you have to trust me that that lines up. And it's got the same multicoloring. So if if you have a back and forth phone split, it'll you'll see the color division between the scenes. And you now I've tried a few of these. There are many different scene formats, scene scene labeling, clip name labelings people use. So you know the, the, the algorithm will develop as as I add more and more intelligence to it. But you know you get something like that. Uh, and very speed, just a little bit of comedy uh, up here. Left okay. to go slower. And click back on the number to, to reset to, to, to normal time. So that's there, just a bit of fun if anyone finds that useful. Track name filter upgrade. So track name filter, which was in 1.2.0, and now includes the track names of whatever file you're currently on. So the current file I'm showing has Mixel, Mixar, Boom, Fijo. You can just click on them to add them. So I want to add, you, you don't have to type it anymore. You just get Mixel, Mixar, OK. So now Mixel and Mixar have gone. So that just m avoids you having to worry about typing it exactly. Um, the removal is the same. You need to press remove and then press OK and then just reset it. So that's just an improvement on the track name filter. TC search in media panel is now a TC mode here which as you type it will look for things that look like that time code so 0001 uh, why is it showing that? Who knows? Oh, that's because I'm looking at the duration, being an idiot. Look at the timestamp, <laughs> 0001, there, it's showing those those ones. So it filters the timestamp as you, as you type it, 50. But then uh, if you type a complete time code, 
it then it, it switches from searching for a text match for that time code to actually looking for all files that contain that specific time code. So anything in the current list that contains that time code will show up. So very useful for sort of finding a, a certain time code from something within any files. So um, maybe this project doesn't have many overlaps, but if you have lots of mess with duplicates, you could find them. Uh, and it's associated with this copy current waveform TC pos into search field. Any any time code position you're at, the current time code of the playback here. If you do Control Alt Command click, it will just go to the time code search for that value. So this will show this file. And if there were other files, or a body pack recorder, or a duplicate, or or a different day with the same time code, they would all show up. Um, it's incredibly useful for troubleshooting. So Control Alt Command and then click on the time code field, sends that value into the search and goes into time code mode. Ah, oh, there you go. Here's one that has two. So I, I, I did this, and this time, 230141, appears on both these two different days. So you know, th that can be useful for troubleshooting. Uh, extend selection with similar EDL. Okay. Shift, shift clicking on any anything, anything in EDLs, click selects all matching files. So there I'm selecting 42. Now I've added so you can click Alt to add shift clicks. So you can you can pile up multiple shift clicks. Uh, I've also added a clear selection option command C. Just that's a quick shortcut to that. Uh, Restore PT sync clip selection. I'll do I'll do last user selection first. Control Command Z. So uh, just go to something. Click the P's. So I've selected this. Click the P's. I'm Click listening to P's. it. If I go elsewhere, I'm not going to select anything. I'm just clicking elsewhere. Control Command Z. Click the P's. Jump back to that file and to that clip. Click the P's. So that, you know, if you that, that people, that's, that's if you're if you're looking at something and then it, that it accidentally jumps away or you click away, you can just resume. Click the P's. Click the P's. But as soon as you select something else, oh well done. That oh, well will, done. That will replace. Oh well done. That will replace the selection. Uh, and there's a slight slight bug there where it's, it, it treats it as a zoom in because it's because it includes a Z press. Well, I'll fix that up soon. Restore PT sync clip selection. I can't do it now. I haven't got a, a, a synced session. But this, it's the same thing, essentially, if you have a, the, the syncing, if the sync jumps to a clip from the timeline and then you click off it, pressing the, the, the uh, control command X will jump to whatever the most recent PT sync clip was. So that's useful if you had a sync clip and then you're looking around for alts and stuff. And you and you want to get this, the the PT sync clip back. You don't have to re-trigger the MIDI. It will just activate in the same way. Uh, project menu now has a has a new project thing. That's a self-explanatory. Uh, seek PT time code in current file. I already described that. Um, oh no, I didn't. I'm getting confused. Uh, PT time code in current file. See, I've added a lot of these time code troubleshooting things. Option Control Command X will. Uh, whatever your current uh, time code according to your Pro Tools sync, so whatever time you're, you're, you're syncing to from your timeline, um, source time code. So if you're within a certain file and it's jumped to that clip and it's, and it's like the wrong file because of a metadata mess up, you can go to a different file and you can say, Show me that same time code, but in this file. Again, I don't have anything open to demo it, but essentially, it's 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 it's, it's similar to searching for the, this time code across multiple files here, but it will it it does it using the Pro Tools syncing to time code. You have to use this to fully understand it, and I can show someone directly if they want to see it. Custom cache locations. Some people who need, who are working on locked drives don't mess with that unless you need it. Pro Tools suspend syncing during drag and drop. If you were dragging and dropping across, and this this MIDI information used to trigger the syncing, so while you were dragging, it was annoying. Now, once you start a drag, it no longer the the Pro Tools syncing turns off. So that's useful. Uh, this is small things, small things. I, in theory, you could open up MIDI files and MP3s. I took it out 
because it was getting buggy. Uh, so I've removed that for now. Cool. Thanks. As always, contact me directly if this was unclear. I just thought I'd put something down to uh, show the new stuff. Thanks very much.